Fam review. Hey guys, World Eater here. Today we are going to be going over a specific familiar that the community is very, very fond of. We already went over Blinka, now it's time to go over another familiar that a lot of people really enjoy. I know a lot of you may know who this is, so if you can guess the answer before I actually announce it, go ahead and leave it in the comments below, I'd love to see your answers. But anyways, without any further ado, let's get right into it. Let's go right down here into the Familiars tab. We'll go over to Fusion, and we'll type in Bars. Right, if any of y'all guessed correctly, you guys are awesome. Of course it's Glars. Glars is probably unanimously one of the favorite Fusion Familiars in the game, right next to another one that we all have in mind as well. So let's go ahead and click on him real quick. Let me just show you that he comes with 25% damage reduction right off the bat, which is nice. 2.5% absorb chance. So right off the bat, before even having any pumps, he's nice. But do you need pumps? Yes. Now don't look at these stats and think he's going to be that strong when you get him. Um, stats pretty much scale up based on your level and your TS, so don't even... If you see your Glars with like 1000 health or 2000 health or something, that's completely normal. This is just going based off of my scaling, so just disregard that. But anyways, the good thing about damage reduction is although block is um, pretty much entry meta for any bait familiar right away, uh, from tier 12 and above at least, damage reduction is actually still very, very solid in... If you want to use him in raid, he's pretty solid in raid. If you want to use him in quest, he's very, very solid in quest. He's also very, very solid in um, invasion, gauntlet, trials. Now, this is where you're going to want to use Glarzos the most. Very strong in PvP as well. This is a bait familiar that, in my opinion, is the bait familiar for everyone to go for first. Now, there are some reasons why you wouldn't want to go for him first. Let's say you're going to skip him completely and go for another bait familiar, maybe a mythic bait, or you wanted to try going a block bait instead of having a damage reduction bait, which there are some options, they're just a lot harder to make, and I'll probably make a video on that specific familiar later on. But uh, for the earliest uh, convenience of getting a really nice bait familiar, I would say Glarsdos is one of the first um, options that you can go for that is extremely, extremely solid. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at his skills. It's not just his stats here. His skills come with damaged closest, which is pretty pretty usual. Damage closest, pretty cool abilities there. Um, heal self. Now this is amazing. This thing right here, this heal self, super strong. Like, I would honestly just ignore the fact that he has shield teammates. Like that one's cool and all. It's a very great ability, don't get me wrong, but the shield self is what makes him shine in my opinion. And I'll go ahead and show you how in just a second. He also has, um, again, the shield teammates, which is nice. It's it's not a bad ability at all. There's also the deals damage to target enemy, which in my opinion is very, very strong whenever you do actually need to do that damage with Glars. That is the best ability to have on him is a target ability. So I'm so glad that he has this ability. And I don't know if you noticed, he's very, very, very cheap to use his abilities with. Like one SP across the board or zero. Nice. For his last one, it's heals target teammate, which I believe you can heal yourself as well. And if you see here, it is a higher number than the zero SP. So if you didn't need to do damage, you just needed to stay alive. This right here is a good way to give yourself even more heal. But um, just remember, he is very slow and that option doesn't really come up that often. But when it does, it can come in clutch. So the very nice ability. His whole kit is very nice, minus maybe the shields. And even then, it's still very solid. Now. Let's go ahead and go over builds real quick before I show you how to get them. Any when hit brain is good on him, whether it's offensive or defensive. I prefer to have something with either shields or an offensive brain because here he does very well with keeping himself alive. A heal and shield team or spread heal or whatever it is. I think it's this one right here. Um, spread heal and spread shield uh, when you get hit is probably the best thing for him in my opinion if you just want to keep him alive. Otherwise, you would want like an attack closest, an attack team when hit. You can't really go wrong with him as long as it's a when you get hit brain. Uh, then that's when he shines. Per turn is probably the worst. Um, actually, I would think maybe when you hit is the worst since you don't really hit that often. So even if you have a green when you get hit, it will almost always be better. So always put a when you get hit brain on him. For the augment, 
Now, I don't have that many to choose from, as you can see here. Um, you can always do while below health, heals received are 90% more effective. In my opinion, that one's really nice, depending on how many Glars and tanks you're running. Uh, if you're going to be running double tank, you're more likely going to have redirect on both those tanks, and you won't need to redirect on your Glars. If you're only running baits, you would want redirect on them. So let's say it's only a three-man group, and you have Glars, you as DPS, Bars. Then you're obviously going to want to redirect Bone on him. That way, it would target them over you. But if you're going to have a full team of, let's say, four or five, and you have two tanks, one DPS, and a bait, you really wouldn't want redirect. Because if they have an attack weakest, he'll be getting nuked down pretty bad, and he'll die. And then once he dies, your DPS is more than likely next in line. So you're going to more than likely want, while below percentage health, heals received are 90% more effective in just about every case scenario, unless you're doing a Glar sandwich like I explained before. Other than that, it would be redirect. Go ahead and check out the chip. I'll just leave this one on him for now so you can see it. For the chip, I would almost always say um, something about either damage reduction or heal power. Believe it or not, heal power is a very, very good chip to have. That way when you do your zero SP heals on yourself, you heal yourself dramatically more. Like for the mythic one, it's 15% heal power, but you also got to take into consideration while below 25% health, heals received are 90% more effective. So you're, you can pretty much almost zero to full with his abilities if you know how to play him correctly. Um, right now, I'm going to go ahead and probably put this heal power on him. You can do the heal power or you can do something like uh, damage reduction while shielded, which is nice if you need him to be tankier versus um, healing himself more. The only time I would run the heal chip is if I have no real heals other than his brain. Um, but that's only if like you're going to be running a lot of offensive brains and pets in the team. So that's the only time I would use heal power. Personally, I would almost always use heal power anyways. I feel like I always have some kind of heal team regardless. So heal power is the way to go for me. And then of course, the only thing you're gonna wanna slap on him, and I mean this as only thing, is going to be damage reduction. You don't need anything else. You don't need damage. You don't need absorb chance. Like yes, it's on there, but it's very, very minimal. You don't need block. You can't reach 100 block and you don't have over which you can't put on familiars then block is never the way to go so unless you could somehow find a way to get him max block it's never worth it. so damage reduction all the way i believe all my damage reduction pumps are taken right now but i can take a quick look here real quick fine i'll just fix them later so damage reduction damage reduction and where's the damage reduction so here he's starting at 25 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15 so these three right here i believe are 45 plus 25 that's going to be 50 60 70 damage reduction so that's pretty nice which is why i don't really think you need a damage reduction chip but of course i do have mythic pumps but anyways that's going to be the most ideal build for glars in my opinion this guy is honestly a beast if you get this guy on your team you plus five him and you have a setup similar to this one, even if it's just epic or legendary, I promise you, you will see, you'll have a noticeable spike in your power for your team. So let's go ahead and go on to the schematic here. For one Glars dose alone, you're going to need three Teal'ks, 15 Neural Net Roms, 15 Epic Material, and 50k Gold. Let me go ahead and show you where to get all that real quick. We're going to go ahead and start off with where to get the Teal'ks. Go to Quest. Here in Aramore, I believe it's tier 5, you go to this pyramid here, it's the only pyramid in all the maps, click on it, it's called Teal'c's Palace. Now, I highly recommend you never farm any of these two, always farm Heroic, and it's because it comes with 200% capturing. Now this isn't the only place you can get Teal'c, I believe there's multiple places which I can show you right now, I know for sure you can get Teal'c here in the dungeon, but as you see here, capture rate isn't. And so depending on what type of player you are, uh, here you would come here to get cosmetics along with other schematics that you may or may not need in my opinion all of these are useless and um so pretty much you would only farm here if you want to get cosmetics as well as try to farm lars i highly recommend just farming the teal'c here at teal'c's palace i believe if you come to sorry about that if you come to the familiar themselves bars and you click on teal'c if you see this little map sign on the left on the very left hand side click on it It'll show you where you can get them. It's Palace, 
Necromore, and Gremlin. So, let's go ahead and check out the quest map real quick. You have here Necromore. You have here Tilk's Palace, and I believe Gremlin is over... From? Right here, Gremlin. That's the other place you can farm them. But again, 50% capture rate. So now that that part's over with, uh, one more time, Tilk's Palace, tier five. We're gonna need three of him for each Glars. That's where you get that. And to get the neural net ROMs, you have to come here to World Boss. Go ahead and do summon real quick, just so I can show you. We're going to come over to Extermination. So this World Boss, unfortunately, only has two. So the most ideal time to farm this, for his schematic and his resources to make him, is tier 10 and tier 11. So I'm just going to go ahead and put tier 11, just put it. You're going to want to do heroic. I believe the of heart can do hard and drop the Glarsdo schematic and normal drop it. Normal can drop it as well. So you can always do normal, but again, it's dramatically less. Like here you see item find 25% heroic, item find 50%. Now you can always just do normal if you want to solo it and you can't do these. So that's entirely up to y'all. But if you guys can do heroic, it's almost always worth to do heroic because the item find doesn't just affect the drop chance of the Glarsdo schematic. It also affects the drop chance of the neural net ROMs. So you're going to want to do as much item find as possible when doing this. And you also have to remember that I believe it's world boss that has one of the lowest, if not the lowest base um, item find in the game. So you're going to want to do it on an item find day if possible. If you're trying to nuke it all out at once, get all of it out of the way. Let's say you're a pay to player, you saved a bunch of stuff to farm that. That's the best time to do it. If you're just going to be a free to play, you can do it daily. But if you're going to pop a boost to farm it, you want to do it on an item find day with item find scrolls on or some kind of boost. Now, is he expensive and hard to make? No. But does it take a while? Yes. People think that that's expensive, but when you go to another familiar that takes a lot of different legendary familiars and stuff, you realize, okay, yeah, that's nothing. So in the end, Lars is worth it. And in my opinion, really, really should be one of just about just about all of y'all's goal at the beginning of the game. Glars is a huge game changer. Some people still use him all the way here into tier 19. Tier 19 just got released and I still see a bunch of Glars Dose out there. So that's going to be pretty much wrapping it up with Glars Dose. If you guys want anything else like a deeper uh, dive in how to use him team comp wise, I can go ahead and do that for you as well. Maybe I'll make a short for it or maybe another short video. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much describing Glars in its entirety. Thank you so much for stopping by. This was World Eater. Have a great one, guys. Peace.